welcome back to KSP 1.4 Making History and we're still out of here at Juna and we have a, a year and 170 days to go for our transfer window. So even though the next Viking craft coming in is 15 days away, I did get a few comments saying, hey, do you have enough spade to be on your rescue craft? Yes, we do. So we could use some of that and I think we go ahead and do that. I think we're going to need around 600, 700 to get back to Kerbin and then another few hundred to put ourselves into an orbit and a little bit just to lower our lower us excuse me lower ourselves into the atmosphere so yeah we have you know at least 1200 spare and I think we uh, should probably just see if we can reactivate my previous dips by getting close to this uh to this essentially satellite now I'm not going to match planes I'm just going to send us out there so we're really, really close. It's like six kilometers away from it as it'll actually pass. So I'm just going to execute that next node. And uh, we don't need to worry too much about communications or anything because we're on a manned vessel. And once we're up out there, I'll then reorganize the orbits so that we can close in on this thing. We need, we need to go out a little bit to slow down or in a little bit to speed up. But I just want to get roughly in the right region for us to, to get there. Um... It may even, I mean, it's six kilometers, so we could just try and catch it once we're out there. Hmm. Let's see how this goes anyway. So first maneuver. I'm not sure who's flying here because both Jeb and Val are both pilots. Certainly enjoying the sunrise anyway. So here they should be going in a few seconds. It won't take very long. It's only a few hundred meters per second. There goes our orbit, our apoapsis is heading right up here. And then what we're going to be doing is, oh, slow down. And pretty much on the money. There we go. So we're going to be going outside the orbit a little bit to get this done. It's very, very slight, but it's very hard to, for you to see that. Um... Yeah, it's just going outside. So let's just get to around here, shall we? So let's warp here. Make sure we've got plenty of uh, sunlight for our batteries. Yep. Lots of uh, resources available. So around we come. And uh, we're somewhat ahead of it. Uh, so it's going to be 14 minutes before we are six kilometers away. So let's, uh, that's, there we can see it a little bit better now. Well, we're going, no, I'm not, not outside so much, we're more inclined. Yeah, so let's get a little bit closer. And get to around six kilometers. You see it's coming in behind us now. And warp there as well. Okay, so now that we're out here, I cancel all of our relative velocity just by using the retrograde marker in target mode. And now I've just pointed us using the target uh, sort of SAS mode, pointed us at Viking 1, and uh, you'll see we've got a target 0.1 kilometers in just in the five minutes. Of course, I will be speeding that up and not showing on camera. So let's just flip ourselves over, ready to decelerate, and I'll see you when we're closer. And here we are, a great deal closer. So let's see if Nielden can actually go EVA. We're going to let go and go RCS. Here we go. Let's head over and see if this thing will let us reactivate. Maybe not, but you know, you've got to try. You've got to try. Whoops. And let's just cancel that. All of our velocity, ideally. Okay, now can you extend the solar panels? You can. Okay, that's two. And, well, that should be enough. But uh, let's just do all the rest. Well, all the rest, there's only one left. There we go. Okay, and let's head back inside. Get nice and uh, protected. You know, you get service calls from halfway across the solar system just to undo a bolt and wind something out. But hey, engineers, well, more mechanics, I guess, but <laughs> mechanics will be uh, mechanics. Let's just uh, grab, oops, let's head up and grab onto this now. Back it off a little bit. 
There we go. And board. All right, and now let's switch craft. Are you active again? Let's just see. Electric charge is building. We can control this thing. Look, it even turns. <laughs> okay, so we have got a very faint connection to Balkabanur, and this similar to Baikonur. So again, yeah, uh, all of this craft already carries its own antenna anyway, so that's not much of an issue. But this will serve for future use out here at uh, at Duna. So I'm going to try and get away from this without disturbing it. So I'm just going to go and pull away a little bit from our newly restored craft around Juna. Which means now I need to think about, um, well, one, we can just remove, well, get the right target. We're going to want to target Kerbin. And now because we're in a different orbit, we're a little bit higher. We're going to want to replot a new node. So we're going to return for um return uh, transfer to another planet. Next transfer node, create a node. And uh how far away is that? Um whoops, there we go. Year five day two nine eight. Uh really? Hmm. Well, one year, one hundred and four days. Fine, no problem. Uh, we can line up, I guess, with that, but that's not really all that uh, useful. But 726 meters per second, we've got 2,000. That should be more than enough to get going. So let's just align ourselves with that maneuver node. And then, of course, we can wait. So we can just add another um, alarm. And in fact, let me just delete both of those because I can't remember which one is which. Um, <laughs> add another alarm. There we go. So we know when we need to return with our two pilots and one engineer, which leaves us maybe short of pilots. However, we should get this other Viking 2 in and going. So we should probably go over there. That's going to be done only 15 days away from its maneuver node change. It has a lot of Delta V available. So we can think about putting this in a different area than before. Let's just zoom out. There we go. So uh, we want to go and look at where this is going to take us. Um, how can we get closer to Juno from that? Let's take a quick look. OK, it wasn't letting me focus on Juno, so I'm focused on Ike instead. But that should give me more than enough uh, sort of uh, visibility for me to choose a maneuver. So we're going to go for one around here. We've already set this up previously, and now we just have to execute it. We can close that alarm, and we should be able to execute that now. Here we come. And we're coming in over the top. This is very much a sort of polar orbit, so that's not really much issue. It is 500 Delta V, and that's most of our fuel tank gone, but that won't be all that much of an issue. Once we get into an orbit, Okay, so we've got 133. I wonder if that's enough to lower the other side of the orbit so that it's in the atmosphere and then dump the stage. So if we did it around here, because the other side is closest to the planet, if we're going to maneuver and just run retrograde. Yes, it is. Okay, so we can use that to drop this stage directly into the planet. We can execute that. And then, obviously, the rest of this will make sure we are going to be OK. The rest of this stage will be then left with three and a half thousand Delta V. As long as we don't lose any kind of connection <laughs> and uh, cause a problem there. And then we'll raise that back up again immediately as soon as that's actually done. So we should go around there very shortly. So time warping up, bringing ourselves around, and there, there's our dune lander. Is that right on top of the other? Hmm. Yeah, hydrogen returns all the way out there. Can't do anything with our lander, of course. So that's fine, and now we can lose this stage, so... Detach. 
we can enable this one and then we're going to turn on SAS, point our cells. Well, we don't want prograde immediately. We just want to move so that we are pro radial or anti radial. Doesn't really much matter. We're just moving away from our discarded stage. That'll be more than enough. Point ourselves prograde again. And then we'll just correct this manually. We don't need to do any kind of maneuver. So there we are on prograde. And we can just bring ourselves up into circular orbit again. Yep, no need for directories anymore. We are safe. But I'll bring ourselves circular. It's uh, There's no real harm in not doing that. So up towards 550,000 or so. Passing 250. If you had a science craft, you could probably get more benefit by having the periapsis be um, very quite quite close to the atmosphere, uh, because then you could do various things that that'll do. That's close enough. But you could do various things like get it low Juno science and high Juno science by putting your high end earlier. But out here as well, uh, I don't think we have anything. Well, uh, we can get these, but we probably already have them anyway. So that is fine. So now we've got Viking two and Viking one. Both working in orbit around Juna. Viking 1's out there, Viking 2's the inner, and we probably have enough Delta V even to readjust this into sort of a triangular geosync kind of status, but uh, that's for another day, I think. Let's uh, switch back to our Juno return craft, and let's time warp forwards and get them back towards Kerbin, shall we? Now, as we're time warping down, and not very much longer to go, uh, you can do this faster from the the um, space center. I'm just going to do it while we're in orbit here. Obviously, you see lots of spinning on the screen. Hopefully, that's not too disorienting. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention is that uh, just at certain points in the orbit, we're probably going to lose connection on with the automated Viking 1s, Viking 2s, just because of how far we are away, and we're not at level 3 on our antenna on Kerbin yet. So. Once we get the Deep Space Network antenna level three, then we should be able to reconnect with these wherever we are, I think. So here we are coming in, 30 days left. There we go. Yeah, all of our resources are just fine. And we're slowing down now into uh, the transfer window. So we can just actually clear that alarm because ours is going to be a little different than that. So yeah, we're approaching our maneuver we're still on the course with the maneuver node so let's just point ourselves right there and then how long will burn is it it's a full minute of burn uh that should give us a margin of three minutes yep so let's head up in there ah oh, i guess not <laughs> we're going now okay and i'm flying this one i'm not uh we could actually use MakeJab to do it, but again, it's it's very straightforward at these points. These maneuver nodes shouldn't have much of an issue. That's not good. I didn't exactly want an encounter with Ike, but uh, I guess if it works, it works. We'll see. Okay, and I'll see you once we're out of the maneuver node. So if we're going to have this encounter with Ike, is there anything we can actually capture? Uh, EVA report and crew report. So let's just cra capture a crew report and we'll keep it. EVA report, we're going to have to head out, but hey, why not? Um, hey, Val, why don't you uh, just get an EVA report from outside? And that's another 40 sites from, from both of them, I imagine. So reboard. <laughs> let's see how far off Ike has thrown us. That's usually the problem with Ike. It's a quite massive, uh, unlike the real life Mars where the, the moons are tiny. Okay, so let's just get out of the uh, sphere of influence of Ike. Speed up a little bit, come on. There we go. Okay, so let's just see where it's thrown us. No, yeah, we're fine. So closest approach is 88,000. So if we just spin ourselves, and it's going to be mostly retrograde, I would have thought. Uh, can we set ourselves... Uh, we don't want to focus view just yet. We want to get this to an encounter first. So there we are. Let's just bring this in. There's an encounter. So now we can see Kerbin. Focus in there. And we can bring ourselves in. 
Ah, oh, that's logged off the encounter again, I think. Yeah, it has. We may have to do this halfway around, but uh, that will be just fine as well. So let's just do this. And can we bring ourselves into an encounter? We should be able to. There it is. So it's going to be with some of the other markers. Um, let's have a look at radial. Maybe out, maybe I never, never remember this. Yeah, no. Let's actually just wait until we get closer. So I now want another maneuver node. And I want one. Um, let's just focus back on the ship. I want one around about here or something like that. Add a maneuver. From that, we can add an alarm, and that then will let us adjust things. So let's focus back on the planet. Let's see. We shouldn't need very much at all to actually bring this in. Uh, let's just go to ones and radial. Now, which way are we going to be coming in? I want to be on the other side of the planet. I want to be coming in not against the orbit, so we have to go past a little bit. There we go. So we're going to go coming in from that direction, exiting that direction. So we're going to bring ourselves in much closer. I can see where the, the node's going. Just playing with these a little bit. Yep, still the right direction. Sort of coming more polar now. Well, not quite what I want. Let's just bring this in a little bit. Add some more radial. We want to be somewhat equatorial. There we go. And that's going to be pretty close. Uh, let's just see if we can we flatten this out a little bit more. It's pretty flat, and that's an 80 kilometer apex to this curve to our periapsis. So, yeah, I'll tailor that a little bit more, but it's only 32 meters per second. And we could try for a direct <laughs> error capture, but more than likely, we have more than enough delta v to actually do a proper orbital, um, yeah, you know, proper orbital braking, and then we'll come back down at orbital speed rather than interplanetary speed. So, I'll see you when you get back when we get back to Kerbin. Actually, may as well include this manoeuvre as well. I have just got out and got the solar crew report and EVA report, so we've got an extra amount of science there. Uh, it'd be useful if it would show us how much science we're actually carrying on board without actually having to review everything. We don't have to have a counter somewhere on the user interface. If anyone knows a mod that does that, that's actually quite handy to have, uh, just because then you can see what you actually want to do if you're skipping around a planet or something trying to get more science. So uh, this is fine just about here. We don't need to do anything further. I'm just going to focus on Kerbin itself. And you'll see just how <laughs> how much of a change this is. I did fiddle with this a little, little, little bit more. We're down to 92 kilometers. Still above the atmosphere, but uh, otherwise, let's. this is a two-second burn. So let's just burn one, two, and let's just fine-tune the last part. And I want to point at the maneuver node just for the last bit, just to get this as close as I possibly can. And around it goes. And that's more than close enough for uh, any kind of level of detail. That'll take us to 153 kilometers. So we're then going to add a maneuver, and we're just going to say circularize. And in fact, we don't even need to circularize. We could say that's uh, how much is that? 990. We've got 1300. Uh, what we could just do is uh, just take off. Um, Take off some of this. Uh, yeah, even there's good. And that's only 391. And then we can just lower ourselves into the atmosphere from the other side of the orbit. So that is more than enough to solve the problem. So we're going to execute that next node. It's going to spin us around and then take us to that. Um, that actually, we can get rid of that alarm now. That was just for this current maneuver that we've just done. And in we go back towards Kerbin. Spinning around. Uh, how long have we got left? 100 days? 
This has been a multi-year excursion for both of our pilots and our engineer, but uh, we, no, we're coming back in. Here they come, 70 days. 60. I almost need an extra level of warp, although it might cause problems with the maths in the game. Uh, that uh, might be a bit of an issue. Here we come. So, 5, 4, 3. We've got a nice signal strength now, even on our terrible antenna. Well, I don't think we've ever... Have I ever... No, I've never really opened the uh, the large scale one. It uses a battery power, which we just don't need. So that's fine. Got a strong connection back to the surface. So we could send science back now, but hey, we're going to be recovering it, right? And right over the space center. Look at that. So in we go. And we should be breaking now. As we pass right over the top. And at this point, it doesn't really matter. We can stop any time we like and just save some fuel. Um, in fact, why don't we do that? Yep. And then we just add a maneuver to this side. And we're just going to pull in that periaps to, uh, into the atmosphere. Um, usual kind of 30 kilometers, I think. So let's just go... Uh, what are we on there? 103? 56, and let's bring this down a little bit more. 31, 27, maybe up a little bit more. 28, that should be just fine. And let's execute that one. So around we go, and we'll see you for the final approach back onto our home planet. And apologies, but it looks like this is on the dark side of the planet. So we're coming in to... So you can't see a... a sort of re-entry, but 282, some reflections on this craft um, just while we're heading in towards the planet. We're on the retrograde marker, so there's nothing really to do here. Uh, we can actually bring the solar panels in because they're not any use anymore. And to be fair, we're not going to need the rest of the craft anyway shortly. So that's just a point to reflect on it. So I've never needed the RCS. I thought I might do just to remove maneuver out there. Didn't need them, so we could have saved all that weight here. And that may be something that you can do on your own craft. Didn't actually need this as well because we went completely manned, but this, this craft is here in case you want to go unmanned, so you can open that up to maintain connection if you did want to do that. Of course, you are going to need then probably to replace this with a science bay and put uh, you know a probe core in it, something along those lines. So with that in mind, we've got uh, how many resources? 146 uh, out of 150. Yeah, not much I could do at that point. So we're going to point uh, normal for a second. And we're going to lose our faithful Poodle engine with its thousand Delta V remaining. Off it goes. Point ourselves back retrograde. We have a heat shield on the other side, as we're showing in the design side of things. I've got two drogue chutes, which I've separated out into a separate stage. They were in the same stage as the main chute originally. And uh, hopefully they will do the job. This is a much larger parachute than the regular one. So we're coming in towards the planet, so let's uh, increase this. Do we get to that area? Hopefully we have enough electric charge to do this. And there we are, we've hit the atmosphere. Okay, so we're in at 60 kilometers. We should be going down close to the, yeah, the desert airfield. Not the desert, the desert airfield, just in the ocean to the east of it. So it's a shame we couldn't land right on it, but uh, I forgot to look at that for the trajectories, to be honest. So we're on the, uh, we're on the retrograde marker. And we should be able to disable SAS now. This, unlike our previous craft that we were doing this with at Juna, this is aerodynamically stable, so you can save power by not using SAS. Not that we need to particularly do that, but uh, it should be mostly symmetric anyway. And it's bleeding off speed. We're at 3,000, so this is going to be a pretty normal descent. But I'll let you see, once we get a whole lot closer to the ground, a successful landing. And here we are at 16 kilometers, 15. We've got the drug chutes, they can open. They're gonna slow us down from that 400 down to below 300 somewhere, I imagine. And our main chute is also deployable at this stage. But obviously it won't fully expand until we're a lot lower. The drugs will come first, of course. So we're at 270 now and we're heading down towards the surface. So let's time walk forwards. And hopefully you can see that. You may not be able to, um, that's about the easiest I can make it. And 3,000. 
Drug shoots are opening. Main shoot should be opening any second. There it goes. And it's bringing us down safely. Well, hopefully safely. What we can also do is drop the heat shield. That'll slow us down even more. And we can head towards the surface. And the last few meters, of course. 30, 20, 10. And we splash down. We can we get a surface sample? Well, we're not gonna need the surface sample. Let's recover the vessel with all three of our intrepid astronauts. Or Kermanauts, if you want to call them that. Let's see how much science we get. Oh, hopefully we get some more goodies here. 552 science. Okay, that's not bad. Uh, it's not as good as uh, taking a lot of science to, to Juno, and that'll probably be another vessel that we'll take out there. Uh, it'll have to be a bigger lander. I remember our original lander was because I had a size limit of 140 tons. We don't have that anymore, so we can do more stuff out there if we want to. So 552 science, that's going to give us a bunch of different stuff. <laughs> Valentina and Jeb are both level 4 pilots now. That's great. And uh, we have 474,000. Hmm. Uh, we're going to want more than that, I think. So let's have a look. Which of these should we get? We can only afford one of the 300s. And we can take one of these two as well if we wanted to. That's just the grabber. And that is uh, monoprops. Nice monoprop tanks we can put on the outside, I guess. Nothing else. So we have to choose one 300 node. There's actually three nodes I want. <laughs> I want the high power electrics, which is the large solar arrays. I want the unmanned tech, which gets us make gem ascent. Makes us, me having to ignore ascent now that we're much later into the game. And the Octo 2, which is more important, and the Probodo Bank QBE. So these are new probe cores. They have the ability to point radial, normal, latitude hold, etc. They're much more capable uh, than all the other previous probes and what's the QBE is that just a tiny one I think yeah it's just got regular stability assist but I think it's much smaller 0 0.07 tons versus oh no that's larger what are you then why would I use you when I have you uh maybe slightly less electric charge but that's not much of an issue so I'm going to be going with the Octo 2 just a different shape, I guess, but uh, not, not quite as good. So, yeah, those two nodes will be great, but really, really, I think we should get nuclear propulsion. Um, we're going to be wanting very heavy rocket here as well, but nuclear propulsion will get us the Nerve atomic rocket motor, or rather our interplanetary motor of choice, I would imagine. From this point forward, it's three tons, but we're going to research that. And uh, well, I don't have much money, but we're going we're gonna to buy it regardless. Okay, and I also want to take a quick look at what happens if we take one of our the existing craft that we had and we replace it with the Nerve. So here's our return craft. I've separated the rest of the rocket from it from the moment, just while we actually do a few quick experiments. So if we just grab, let's say, put, make sure I've got this on four. We'll leave the RCS on here just because uh, that might be useful Whoop, ah, in future. Um, I just want that to be moved for a second so it's attached to the top so yeah we've got this rocker max fuel tank and it is full of liquid fuel and oxidizer so let's get rid of that for a second in fact let's get rid of the, the poodle for a second what, what does this have at the moment uh it has 2435 okay now it may well be the next stage down that we replace but uh let's just see what the difference is so the engines are in here, so there's the nerve. You'll see it's quite a small engine by comparison. And building stuff around it, well, that's more of an issue. Um, we want a fuel tank that just contains not the oxidizer, but the fuel. And they do exist, but they are smaller, if remember. The liquid fuel fuselage. So that's smaller. If we have that, can we array them? Maybe surface attach mode? Uh, I may need to just put some other bits and pieces around to get this to attach. But let's just try it with without that for now. I'll just put this on. So that's 1200 and so far, we could do a larger version of the liquid fuel fuselage. Let me just do a quick look uh, to see if there is one in here. 
there we go. So just surface attaching Mark Zero liquid fuel fuselages, two of them, in a section of eight around, symmetry of eight, and that's 16 of the small tanks and one of that Mark I tank. Gets us 3,180, but more importantly, look at the mass. The mass of this, the wet mass, is 18 tons. If we just take off this and put on this, it's 23 tons. Now, it's less delta V, but that's not the important point. The important point is, if I just get rid of this for a second, is that the rest of the rocket below it has to carry that, that amount. So we could either just continue to extend this down to create a new stage. So if we had one there, say, and we had another section uh, here, we could go up to 23 tons. So this is 4,000 delta V. Um, that's still, yeah, that's 4,600 delta V. So nearly double. And it's still on a rocket that was designed to launch it. So if we just put it back around here, you'll see we're up to 10,140 delta V. And they can still take off 1.14, 1.29, 0.8. And then this is obviously not, not great in terms of thrust, but is much, much better as getting us around all over the place. So that, I think, is pretty good. In fact, it, it's more than good enough that you can go pretty much anywhere in the solar system, I think. So we can just save that as our Juno return. Let's call it Juno return. Uh, in fact, let's just call it Juno, or let's just call it something else, Expedition one okay so we can take that all over the place in the solar system if we're willing to do that as long as we can thrust with that low amount of thrust we will be fine you see it's 22 minutes of fuel essentially so all pretty good and that's assuming that we don't we need the rcs stage we can get rid of the rcs stage and if we choose to do so we should be significantly uh in fact let's just see what that's like let's take let's take this off and for now let's put just put our um, solar panels up here and we want to make sure we we're gathering that and we can take you off and put you back 11,600 if we don't need RCS which we shouldn't need for anything but rendezvous so that is a long range expedition ship and I think I'll just save that as expedition 2 uh, 2 yep and we, well, we may not need the antennas, but uh, I'll put it back there just in case on a single. Uh, that may burn off <laughs> when we come back. That may burn off. It may be too big. I may have to fiddle around with the science bay, but, but for now we can take that off and save this one as well. So yeah, I very much like that engine for doing lots of long range stuff. We'll come back to that obviously another day. The alternative is you can take off some of these exterior tanks and you can lighten the rocket, make the whole thing cheaper. This is 86,000. To actually get to Juno, you can now deal with much smaller boosters and then take off some of these tanks. So everything becomes a lot lighter. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this episode. We've got back from Juno. We've got a new engine to, to basically play with. And then we'll be probably having to get a lot more science and missions done to get our amount of money back up. Uh, what have we gotten for next? We got Plant Plague on Mimus. We can do that and the moon. Um, in fact, with that even that rocket engine, the, the nuclear one, is powerful enough for Minmus, certainly. I'm not sure about the moon. Uh, may well be powerful enough to slow us down for that. Plank Flag on Ike. We get, uh, you know, 300,000 for that. That's not a problem at all. Um... When I put science data from Ike, so that, that might actually be the next the next trip out to Juno might be actually a trip out to Ike. It's a, an interesting and challenging place, and it's quite massive for a moon, and uh, it spins backwards if I remember rightly. It's been a while since I actually landed on Ike, but I think it does spin backwards, and we can take that as a new excursion. So hopefully you join me for that. Not quite sure which missions we're going to do next, but uh, we'll see you next episode hopefully for some more Kerbal Space Program. As always, guys, if you've liked the episode, feel free to like, subscribe, share, and as always, thanks for watching.